Hello everyone, this is your civil girl and in this video we are going to continue the design of the trust members. We have already finished the design of Berlin's and we have started with the design of the trust members. So, and before we start, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button, drop me a comment and share this free program with anyone who might need it. In the previous video, we found the dead load of the trust, uh, dead load acting on the trust. Now let us come to the live load. So live load we have already found what is the live load acting on the Perlin. The same will be acting on the truss also. So for the Perlin we got it is 585 Newton per meter. After all these formulas we found that uh, the total live load acting is 585 Newton per meter. I am going to take the same for my uh, truss also. Next is your wind load. So wind load calculation we already found it is 707 Newton per meter square after the pressure coefficients etc. That into inclined area. So we already saw what is inclined area. So if this is my truss. This is my inclined area. So my inclined area is 52.11. Therefore I have found all my uh, dead load, live load and wind load. This is my summary. Now I have to place all these dead load, live load and wind load in such a way that it will act all over my truss member. Now coming to dead load and live load, they are vertical loads. Therefore no problem. Whereas my wind load, I know that it acts away from the rafter. It is in this direction. So coming to your dead load and live load, you can see that uh, if my dead load is taken as 1 kN, then at the end points, the load intensity will always be half of the other panel points. When you look at wind load, you can see that the panel points, the end panel points, they will have half of that of the other panel points. And at this point, since they both are in the opposite direction, you can see this is 0.5, this is also 0.5, whereas the other panel points have 1, 1 in their place. This is just an example, we look into detail about them. So coming to this, dead load at panel points, I have to find what is my dead load at one panel point. This is just an example that it is one. So I have to find what is the dead load at one panel point. So when I look at my panel points, it is one, two, three, four, five. So when I add them all, it becomes one, two, three, four, five and 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, it gives me five plus one, which is equal to six. So my dead load at panel points becomes 17.42 that is my summarized load divided by 6 which will give me 2.9 kN. Therefore in my panel points I am going to place 2.9, 2.9, 2.9 over this point and at my edges like I said here we will have only half of that. So when you add all of these 2.9 plus 2.9 plus 2.9 plus 2.9 plus 1.5 45 plus 1.45 when you add all of them you will get 17.42 that is the concept here next is live load panels live load at panel points so for this again you will have you have to divide it by 6 you will get the answer for wind load also you have to divide it by 6 you will get the answer now that you have got the panel points you have to start with the method of joints uh, to analyze what is the axial force acting on the steel structure so uh, one quick one quick tip here so you don't have to find so you have to find the axial load for all the load conditions for dead load, live load and wind load. So once you find dead load, you can just multiply a load factor here which will give you the axial load for the other load conditions also. So we look into it in detail in the upcoming lecture. So coming to the method of joints for the given section at joint A. So what is my joint A? This is my joint A. So here if I come to my method of joints. You can see for method of joints what is the rule you have to know the maximum a number of unknown forces you can have is two so you can see here a b i don't know and force in a h also i don't know so i have only two members here so i'm going to take it so a closer view here 8.7 is my load acting so this is all I'll have reactions at the ends since i told that it is a simply supported truss so uh since it is a symmetrical truss, I am going to divide the total load by 2 which is 8.7 and 8.7. Now coming to method of joints, I will explain for joint A alone. I will not explain for the other joints because it is uh, pretty uh, repetitive. So coming to joint A, when I uh, summate all my vertical forces, this becomes a vert if this becomes vertical force, this becomes FAB sin alpha. So 8.7 is already vertical. So 8.7 plus FAB sin alpha minus 4.5 this is in downward direction so one thing you have to keep in mind is in the method of joints the forces will always act away from the joint 
ओके दैट इज वील ऑलवेज अस्यूम दैट द फोर्सेस आर इन टेंशन ऑलवेज मैन आई इक्वेट ऑल द वर्टिकल फोर्सेस टू जीरो ओनली एफ ए बी इज यर सो फ्रॉम दिस आई कैन फाइंड एफ ए बी नाउ इफ आई इक्वेट ऑल माई हर्जनल फोर्सेस आई हैव एफ ए बी कॉस थीटा प्लस एफ ए हेच सो एफ ए बी कॉस थीटा प्लस एफ ए हेच फ्रॉम दिस आई ऑलरेडी नो एफ ए बी दे फोर आई गेट एफ ए हेच सो इफ इट इज इन नेगेटिव इट इज कम्प्रेशन इफ इट इज पॉजिटिव इट इज टेंशन ऑन डूइंग सो फॉर जॉइंट बी जॉइंट सी जॉइंट हेच आई हैव फाउंड ऑल द वैल्यूज फॉर ऑल द मेम्बर्स इन द ट्रस्ट ऑन दिस डायरेक्शन एलोन सो सिंस इट इज सिमटिकल ट्रस्ट आई कैन से दैट All the forces in this side will be equal to that of this side. So if this is two point nine, this will be two point five. Uh, similarly, eleven point six, eleven point six, fourteen point five, fourteen point five. So here, all the uh, black color items they are the tension members. You can see all the ties are in tension, and the vertical members are in tension, and all the red color things are in compression. So Since the load is symmetrical, I can find the I can just multiply the load factor for live load and wind load to get the um, axial forces for the live load and wind load conditions. So how will I find the load factor? So coming to this point, so this is four point five. In order to find the load factor for uh, live load, you have to just divide them. That is four point four divided by two point nine. Which will give you 1.52. Similarly, for wind load, you can't just uh, divide 6.14 divided by 2.9 because uh, wind load it is in this direction. You can see this is in this direction. Therefore, you have to uh, make this wind load to come in uh, your vertical direction. For this, I have to multiply this 6.14, 6.14 into cos alpha, that is cos 30 divided by 2.9. So 6.14 into cos 30 will give me 5.317 divided by 2.9. My load factor for wind load is 1.83. So now uh, coming to this uh, table, I have just uh, summarized this thing. This is the first column that you will have to uh, fill. So I have summarized all the values for all the rafters, ties, vertical, and inclined members separately. Now for the dead load, I already know I have filled it. I know my live load factor. My live load factor is fifteen one point five two. So if I multiply this by one point five two, I'll get my live load column. Next, coming to wind load. So here the trick is uh, the wind load factor is minus one point eight three because wind load is away. So if I'm going to find the vertical force, it will be in this direction. That is when I Resolve this to a vertical force; it will be in this direction. Whereas my live load and wind load, they are in the downward direction. Since they are in the opposite direction, my live load factor it has to be multiplied with the negative sign. So, whatever is positive becomes negative here. I have to multiply 1.83 to the uh, dead load with the negative sign to find my wind load. So now that I have found all my dead load, live load, and wind load, I have to go for my combinations. So I have three load combinations. 1.5 times dead load plus live load, 1.5 times dead load plus wind load, and 1.2 times all the three, uh, the sum of all the three. So on adding all those things, I have found that two things. I have to find the maximum tension and maximum compression. So our sign convention is minus is ne uh, compression is negative, and tension is positive. So I have found that these two are the critical members, and for the load combination of dead load plus live load. Mind you, in the previous video, that is for the purlins, it was for dead load plus wind load combination. It has changed for this time. So coming to summarizing all the things, so it is maximum compression is fifty one point eight one kilonewton, and maximum tension is forty eight point three nine kilonewton. So uh, in this member. what we are going to do is we are going to design for compression and check whether it satisfies the tension properties that's it so we are going to design for this load you are going to design for this load and uh, for the given section for this load you will arrive at a section right and for that section you will check whether it exceeds a capacity a tensile capacity of 48.39 kN with this i'll stop this video in the next video let us look into uh, the design procedure for the rafters So hopefully it will end by that part. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.